Hey everybody, and welcome back to Eastern Shore USA Seasons Testing Part 2. Hopefully we will be wrapping our Seasons Testing up to Nat. And if all goes well, this map will be released next week. That is the target that Will is shooting for is early next week. Hopefully we are on target for that. No, he needs to fix some tree collisions, so they're better and easier to cut. We need to get a nice, fancy PDA that is in the works. And then anything that needs to be fixed from the seasons testing we're doing. Rabbit Rob, Will, Diablo, Del Toro. How are you guys doing to Nat? How about them fact sheets? We got a modern classic, just like myself, from the Voltra Valmet. It says 8570. Spaders. Who knew they were a thing? Well, I guess Europeans did. I don't know anybody here in the States that spades their soil. Big case harvester is back. And the case magnum with the Demco auger wagon. We also have a uh, another McCormick tractor was announced and revealed. The X8. And then the X8 was pulling what? A Limpkin. Yeah, cultivator. Oh, that's good. Variety's always good. Four, what is up? It's aged like wine in a box. You know, plastic bag. Scrape the skin off the top and it's still good. Oh, I know, right? Not too much, many days left. This says 23 days, basically, because Farm Sim technically releases for Moave on the 21st. And that is what this is counting down to. Bill, what is up? So I got up here in the sky because I thought it would be be interesting to see. Oh, there he is. We basically have the Fire entire function. old map in view at this right point. And when you're done playing the old map, well, you just turn around. And there's a whole new map right behind you. Give you a little bit of sense of scale. The old map to the new map. I got the new PDA. It looks really nice. Thanks to Nitro Dad for that. Oh, when are we going to get it? 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 I can send it to you right now, as a matter of fact. Let me um, just pull it up and shoot it to you. I am very pleased with it. It looks really nice. He did an outstanding job on it. Golden eye, what is up? Out of my little thing here. I'm not very coordinated this evening. I'm... I think I'll uh, buy the little uh, baby mower for uh, Will to use, and I'll use the chrome. <laughs> the, the, uh, the little walk behind. Yeah. We could just use a fleet of the walk behinds. One thing about it, he won't have any trouble fitting it through his gates. <laughs> uh 
Oh, there we go. We got a fleet of them. for a minute. I think it's sorted now, I hope. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? What? No, if, if you were talking, I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, everything up until now, I think, was dead because the microphone was broke. Yeah, up to, I'm going to send you the PDA and then nothing. Yeah, I heard a click in my end. I'm like, oops, something went wrong. <laughs> All right, the PDA is 16 meg, which means it's going to be too large for... Uh, uh, you can't just what zip you it. Call it. Yeah, I'll zip it, and if it don't go small enough, I'll just stick it on media fire real quick. It won't take but a second. I'll give you a link. Uh, you think an idiot would learn you got to buy a field first? If you're playing farm sim for this long. I found and fixed the problem with the volume trees not cutting. It was the collision when the global replace I did originally to fix the LOD distances on them and the collisions went away. When I came back and replaced all the collisions, I just defaulted to the standard game default FF collision. And the one for cutting trees is a little bit different. Did you buy these with GPS for my home? No, why would I do that? <laughs> this is realistic. <laughs> you gotta walk behind, buddy. You don't have GPS. I have genetic <laughs> positioning system. <laughs> you got your phone in your pocket, don't you? Yeah, I'll set your phone up on the handlebars and just walk behind it. feel like the modern Amish. So the collision <laughs> mass for cutting trees is 1003022, so it's a little bit different. I like the Amish in our area. Like they all have like you know electricity and running water and skid steers and stuff like that that they can't drive a vehicle. They're modern Amish. That's what I'm saying, modern. <laughs> They've been modern modernized. They can, they can drive anything but a car, huh? Yeah, but they can ride in someone else's, so that's okay. Uh oh. Then they're, they're not owning it, so that's not their material. Right. But yet they own the skister that they drive, so that's kind of strange. Well, that's for work. Oh, okay. That's not, that's not like a luxury item. What if it's a car for work? You might have just blown their mind. <laughs> they may not have figured out that loophole. I mean, hey, it's a work vehicle, you know, tax deduction. You can drive it since it's for work. <laughs> Do Amish pay taxes? I don't know. Do they work? Well, not for anybody else. Technically, yeah. I guess that means they're self-employed and they would have to pay. The ones around here built buildings for other people and saw lumber and sawmills and stuff like that. Headlight. Well, that alfalfa will be tall, huh? Take that flashlight you're pocket to the handlebars. Oh, no. There, there it's just in time. Well, it better be some fun, because I just wasted like 40 minutes of my life in another game. 
We I are. We're, we're mowing. We're mowing alfalfa. Play a NASCAR game later. I I'm playing NASCAR. I don't know what the rest of the game's trying to do. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I sent it to you. Okay, it's uh, BDA map H zip. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Eastern Shore USA map testing. We're going to be doing some more geo testing today, and just for funsies. <laughs> Me and Genetic are uh, doing something completely stupid. It's kind of <laughs> hard to keep track of the saddle. Uh, that alfalfa's as tall as your head. How can you see where you're going? Put this thing over <laughs> here. Oh, I guess I should turn it off. There we go. Let's let's look at this new uh, PDA we got before we get too far into our teasting. Somehow, I think the South Alpha would choke this thing out. To zoom in on this to read the legend. Ain't it pretty? Oh, paved roads, dirt roads, gravel roads, railroad tracks. The roads. Uh, are those speed bumps thrown in? I think so. I was like, what's. No, oh no, they're letters. Their words Emerald Coast Boulevard, South Island Drive. Oh, he put the name of other maps in there. That's funny. Eastern Shores Parkway. Yeah, Nitro Dead does a very fine job with PDAs. Y'all's... I don't know what this is. Nebraska Lands. Oh, Nebraska Lands. Oh, seriously, it looks... You guys are walking around with a Miller, huh? <laughs> what, you thought we were choking? <laughs> 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 I, I take everyone back there is for me, huh? <laughs> well, since you made it in the map first before Will, yes, it's for you. And then the siren goes off. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, we got six. We got cow farm, chicken farm, cow farm, grain farm, pig and sheep farm, and a horse farm. Six farms. And a port. Oh, okay. Ravenhawk, thanks for renewing. Let's get this set up. Extra time scale on. Eight. Yeah, I thought I wanted to do something to uh, occupy the time while we waited. I don't think this is what Darren had in mind, though. Where's my house? Oh, it's over there. Oh, I don't know. 
after what I've been putting myself through, I, this, I look forward to it. It's probably going to work. Oh, we can tell Farmer Klein has been here because the door is open. Indeed. <laughs> so, Darren, I went to uh, to try the NASCAR game over in last night after this. They patched my wheel right out of the game. Patched it out of the game? You're kidding. No. Did you just restart it? Because I... Uh... <laughs> I tried it today just so I could get away with my work around and mine work to the 300. For some reason, you're supposed to try the 500 and it's supposed to work. So, yeah, they took the 150 out. Like, it doesn't even show up anymore in the um, wheel list. Oh, okay. I, I'll double check. They took it out because it was having problems. Yeah, right. All the wheels are No, that nice. one's working. Yeah, so it was working for the early early release, and then they patched it right out. So I was seeing in the Steam discussion, they said to... Uh, they said to pick the TMX, and the TMX works. So we're back in, we're back in business. Oh, don't. Let me just tell you right now. The only game playable is Talladega and try not to get the pole and do it on extreme. That, that's the only, if you want to play it and actually have fun, that's the only one to do. And at 28, 25%, do not pit. <laughs> I did, I did Daytona on a new career. It must have been like the shortest because it was only like four laps. I qualified 11th. I finished third. I probably could have got first if I had uh, been a little bit more bully. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty interesting. All right, so potatoes are ready. We're not going to harvest taters. Sugar beets are good. Let's go here and check out the crops we planted earlier. See if they are up yet. Germinated oats. Germinated wheat. Germinated barley. What oh, are you it's doing, Will? Time. You got hurried up. We almost got 1% of this field done. Hey, we're ready 1%. to harvest. <laughs> That's funny. Ready to harvest. I see how it is. What? I grabbed the only harvester down here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a harvester. I thought that was a dumpster fire waiting to happen. Uh, Forza releases on the ninth. If you well, pre-ordered, day and age, you can be both. Like the deluxe version or something, then it drops on the fifth. That's a parody but harvester. It releases Nancy for Ferguson. everybody on the ninth. Uh, did you see the new fact sheets? with the images of harvesting uh, sorghum. No, I haven't seen them yet today. I need to look at those. I know this guy, he did a really interesting video on him. Yeah, I wonder if his name was FK. Uh, he's been known to go by other names.
we get a spader. Woohoo! That's what I always wanted. Yeah, yeah I genetically didn't know what it was until I explained it to him. I don't either. I, we have to go. Yeah. Asked him if it was a David Spader. No, no. I think it's it's, it's like a power shovel, except it's got lots of shovel blades and it rotates. I seen it behind a tractor, so I couldn't really tell what it did. Yeah, yeah. I got a video of one in the description. Think of it as a giant garden tiller. That's basically what it does to the soil on a much bigger level. I wonder if the 2,000 acre farm down the road for me uses one of those in like two meters or so. They're probably. Well, what I'd like to see is actual cultivators come back. Uh, when I was a kid, we didn't call chisel plows and discs cultivators. We called them discs and chisel plows. Yeah, and a cultivator, get, cultivator was that toolbar thing that goes behind the tractor that pulls weeds out between rows of corn or soybeans or sunflowers. We get we get disc harrows, we get cultivators, we get Yeah, power but cultivators harrows. cultivators we have now are actually chisel plows or vertical tillage tools or whatever, but science nice call them cultivators. Well now you're just being too technical. Well no, it's just that I I was hoping we could get that particular we we got mods on the mod that people have already thought about it and made them. There's a John Deere one and there's a lizard one, and you can use them as weeders in the game, which is what they are in real life. And the uh, nutrient applicators that you've probably seen floating around, they're basically a cultivator with a fertilizer spray on it. Well, Diablo, it's because it's whenever because I was on a farm growing up, we never called a chisel plow a cultivator. We called it a chisel plow or a harrow or well. Or, you know, whatever. We never, we never, I never knew what the word tether was until farm sim. I never even knew what a tether was until farm sim. I'd never heard of one. Right. We always, we always used a hay bind and we pulled the baler behind that after about a day or two letting it dry out in the field and that was good, you know. Well, if, if we had wet hay, we would have what we call it a kicker and all it did was fluff up the hay. Right. Basically what a tether does in essence, but. We called it a kicker because it just kicked the hay up in the air. Kicked the hay, yeah. But maybe that was just our, you know, ignorant country language, and we didn't actually call it what it was should be called. Right. Well, if that's what everybody around you calls it, then that's what it's called. Right, exactly. If it's right or wrong, it's right. Well, I guess technically, according to the dictionary, any tool that turns the dirt is considered a cultivator, and maybe that's where Giants came up with the name. But or, specific names for specific things is better. I like I like the fact that they're now using disc arrows. That's nice. Uh, I mean, the manufacturer seems to call them a cultivator. Oh, you got a really nice tree in the corner of this field. It's because they paid for four years. Where's that? Teach them what to call it. Right, right. Which corner? Twenty-two. So, oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. that's right. A dead one. Just cut it down. So Diablo, <laughs> that's it's, what chainsaws are for. I think it's because of the stark differences between Will swears that these North have been somewhat North American soil and European soil. Yeah, Euro the uh, Europeans were all the field over the definitions spader. Have slid over slightly, I think, and some of the trees that are right on the edge are actually in the field now. But that's okay. That that's an artistic effect. Well, this is the problem with not making it to the group planning meeting what are you guys all doing down there I, we, we, we plan at 11 12 and 13 i got like the biggest compound in the game heading to 12. well because i planted these fields too we corn soybeans and sunflowers all right well you guys look busy down there i'm heading to 12. what's what's in 12. Looks like wheat. Oh, well, it's just germinated. It's not ready. I planted that yesterday. Yes, we did. And I thought you were fast forward to see if it would grow. Yeah, today. I 
All right, I'll park my combine up here in hopes of something later, and I'll go down there and see about <laughs> driving a tractor. How are you planning to get that header through the, the gate? <laughs> oh, I got, I got, I'm dragging one with me this time. It's 45 foot draper behind the largest fence the gate. That's, that's fine. I was looking at the fact sheet. I'm like, can someone explain to me what a spader is? Or a spade? And they're like, it's, it's like a, a big shovel. I'm like, oh, it's like around here, you're lucky if you don't snap the handle off your shovel. Because either we have the super dense clay or we have rocks everywhere. Yeah, the video shows it a bunch of shovel blades, if you will, mounted to a rotating drum. The drum rotates and the shovels basically dig through and scoop out a massive section of dirt. And what you're left with behind it is just apparently ultra, ultra, um, ultra soft, you know, soil. Like, ready to run the planter through. Or a cedar through. So, I think there's now three or four different spaders listed on the mod hub. We get a Vultra from 95 to 2000. I know that made lots of folks excited. Big case harvester showing the uh, Thorgrom, a big magnum, case magnum, on a big Demco trailer. Through the Sorgrum. So we got to see what the ultra high stubble looked like. I have a big trailer down here, Darren, in my track. I forgot to mention Well, Jay, sir, the answer is yes, yes, no, yes, and no. You get to figure out what order those answers are in. At some point, maybe in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, I think we might have a stream with a special guest star in the uh, the American Community Manager for Farm Sim. I think he's going to be on, and we'll be nice. able to respond to questions asked that are not related to things he can't talk about. This and that open-ended. So basically he's gonna give us already available information. Except for what he was allowed to let out of the bag that day. True true but not everybody knows all the latest information you know I would say at least half of the people on the server didn't really know about the fact sheets today um, I watched <laughs> stubborn gaming what's up Put the video out. Jay, sir. Oh, I still have to fix that. Hold on. 
I'm, I'm trying to do something with my ATS bro. This video is brought to you by Delilah Packerton. I acted like a in Thank love you school for being girl a the map video. I wasn't. I didn't see too much on this one that like thrilled me. You weren't thrilled with the spader. The old tractor is cool, but I'd like to see an old American tractor. I'd almost be interested to see, wonder what one of these things would do in order. It might, it might play. Oh, that clay? Yeah, it would rip, the, it it rip might, the scoops off. It just destroy it. Like, uh, okay, that was a fail. Yeah, I, re I remember the first, we got a, uh, we moved in and then we bought a, uh, one, of those, one of those lilac bushes. One of the ones that actually smell because there's lilac bushes that don't smell. And I had a shovel, I stuck it in the ground, I pulled back on a handle and all I heard was cracking. I'm like, oh crap. So I was real gentle and I got little scoops out of dirt. And I learned what red clay was and why it's called red. Because that was the reddest dirt I'd ever seen. Uh, you, you, you could have lucked out and found the deposit of a shell right beside it. Well, I didn't. I definitely didn't get a hole dug. Because probably about two inches or three inches below the clay, it was just solid as, well, rock. So I moved to a different spot. <laughs> right. And luckily I was able to dig a hole big enough before I got rocked. Uh, Kyle, I hope no one's on Windows 8 or 8.1. Uh, because those are massive security holes. And they went to Windows 10 because Windows 10 is the only currently supported operating system. Support win for Windows 7 died like three or four years ago. So that's a massive security hole also. And the fact is that you can update to Windows 10 for free. There really isn't a reason not to do it other than just being deliberately belligerent. Triple X, thanks for the play the button. Windows hesitancy. Oh, heck no. I want to skip Windows 11. Windows 11 is no good. So yeah, Windows 10 goes out of support 2025, I think. So after 2025, you won't be able to get updates for Windows 11 or 10. At least that's the current date. They might extend it. Who knows? Where is this going? port sells it, we can sell it. Yeah, the port takes it. XP was good in the day. Like 25 uh, years ago. I remember sitting in a computer lab in college. 
um, playing the original Command and Conquer on some Windows XP systems. Oh, they probably run... Well, they probably actually run a version of Windows Embedded. There was a Windows 7 embedded. Now there's a Windows 10 embedded. There was a Windows 8 embedded. The problem is with, with XP is there's no driver support for modern, uh, modern drives. So Windows XP would know what a what a SATA drive is, but that's it. So they wouldn't have any clue what an SSD is. They'd be able to run on spinning SATA drives of fairly small capacity. All your viewers need to know is that it requires Windows 10 for FS22. And that's enough of a reason. Yeah, well, that's what it kind of started out as. Kyle's like, why, why do they require Windows 10 for FS22? It's, well, it's because it's the only supported, it's the only operating system that's, that's supported by Windows. I mean, yeah, by Microsoft. So it's the current operating system. Windows 10, but, yeah. I wouldn't go to 11 anytime soon. I can't anyway. Uh, you don't have the TPM? Evidently not. That's all right. Wherever you're running, we'll be good until 2025. Yeah, it'll be time to build a new one by then. A little I-5 will be long in the tooth by then. Well, not I-5, but Rising Tower. Yeah, we'll have to see how this performance cores, efficient cores works out. They might be the, that might be the way to go. What'd I miss? I had to step away for a minute. <laughs> Oh, it's all over with now. You missed everything. I guess I did, didn't I? That sucks. I keep turning my HUD on and off. <laughs> Thanks to it being bound to my pipe out button. I love key bindings, especially when you don't have enough of them. Reminds me of the good old days when we had to find IRQs for computers when you put a sound card in and a oh SCSI gosh. card in and a scanner card in and oh man we're out of IRQs now that sucks. Yeah now you're out. Because <laughs> IRQs were limited we only had so many of them. You're like well what am I going to do I need all these peripherals. Well buy a second mm -hmm. computer because you're out son. Do you want to scan or listen to music? You, you get the choice. That's right. Absolutely, you're not going to do them at the same time. Or do you want, or do you want a network card? But I gotta be on the network. Well, then you gotta get something. Else. <laughs> ah, the good old days. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, then XP came and we had plug and pray and. Yeah, plug and pray just, was about right. You just hope things work when you plug them in. told you they're not patching those operating systems they are massive security holes you're doing you're not doing yourself a favor or any other computer on the same network that you are running on you're one website away from basically As crypto in, locking your, your entire network take everything you got you don't even have to do anything you just have to visit a website boom 
every file on every computer in your home is crypto locked. That's what continuing to run Windows 7 buys you. If you think I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you that I've been in IT for 25 years at an enterprise level managing hundreds of computers and servers. So, pretty sure I know what I'm talking about there. So we're just harvesting corn and beans and flowers. Not flowers. Flowers. Yeah, I haven't been in enterprise in uh, computers quite as long. I started my career in '96, but I've been down that road a lot too. And them security holes will kill you. In '96, that's when I graduated high school or college. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's when I started. I was the first. Um, computer technician at the institution I went to and still work at. I think the IT department at the time was five people. Oh, and okay, we, cool. And we probably had to manage a hundred, maybe at most a hundred computers. And now we're an IT department of like 13 to 14. And we probably have about 700 computers or laptops, probably about 75 or 80 servers. And, and we support probably about 4,000 to 5,000 student devices on any given semester. Well, the most computers I ever had was responsible for at one time was about 60. We had a computer lab with 40 computers in there for the students, and then all the teachers had at least one in their room. The office had like four of them. Yeah, we talked yeah, to, we talk to you know, we'll go and talk to a state institution that has like 50 people in their IT department, and somebody will be like, yeah, my job's to manage XYZ lab. And we just look at them and go, that's, okay. that's, that's your entire job? <laughs> like that yeah. takes you 40 hours a week to manage one yeah. computer lab and that's well, your fairness, only responsibility in fairness for myself I was the only guy in charge of all of them and it was you're on call and you've got to make sure they work and sometimes you don't go home until they're fixed and it's just the way it is because you know, they yeah. got to have them up. Yeah. well you see it's they're a byproduct of their own size and that they don't have to be super efficient. They can just brute force with labor. Right. Like they'll talk about imaging a lab and they'll have, yeah, we have a suitcase full of hard drives and we image a lab, we go around and we basically use, in essence, USB cables to basically transfer an image from hard drive to the system. All right. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, 15 or 20 hard drives to do that with. Mm -hmm. We're like, you do what? <laughs> and like, yeah. And then we're like, well, we network boot them all to a deployment server and kick off the deployment to 20 machines at once. All right. And we're done in about two hours. Like, what? It takes me all day. Well, I don't have time to take all day on one computer lab. I got hundreds of other things to do. You got a lot of other stuff you got to get done. Yeah, so so they're kind of a byproduct of their own capacity, and that they they can do it the super old school way, and no big deal. But it also means they're insanely wasteful with state money. Yeah, and the school I was in charge of was for like for delinquent kids, the ones that get kicked out of regular school, and they were very destructive. 
they would key the monitors, they would break off the headphone jacks in the CD-ROM headphone port, open the computer case and steal the RAM out of it and things like that. So I had to lock all the cases, Rabbit I had to lock the operating system Thanks down, for the super chat go there, to buddy. places online. It was a mess. Yeah. Yeah, it kept like, me and kept me in good money for a couple three years, but you this know this is why was, we can't do. This is why we can't have nice things. Right, exactly. I kept telling the administrator we need to put some cameras in the in the school. They had cameras in the rooms before, and they they fell into disrepair, and he never did want to replace them. But I said, if you keep them cameras running, then you'll have visual proof of the kids that are vandalizing your machines, and you can prosecute them. You don't have to just sit there with your thumb up your booty and not know what to do, you know. Right. But they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to spend the extra money. I said, well, look at all the money you're spending me to fix everything. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. But we went from... Yeah, we went from Windows 3.1 for work groups. And of course, booted to DOS and then fired off Windows. And then we moved everybody to XP. We ran XP till Windows 7. Or no, no, we went to we jumped to Windows 2000 there for a bit. Was that before or after XP? I don't know. It's right right after. before. Wasn't that right before? I thought XP was right after. I thought ME was right before. Uh, ME was a big pile of trash. Yeah, ME was junk. I hated that. Yeah, but you had to learn how to work on your computer if you had ME. So that actually helped me out. <laughs> uh, uh, well, okay. you know. Maybe it was maybe it was 2000 was more of an enterprise OS and yeah. ME was for ME was for, for home users. For, for me. <laughs> yeah, for suckers. Well, for millennials. It was for millennials. <laughs> And then XP was after 2000, I guess. Yeah, XP was nice when it came out. I was happy to see it because it was a fairly decent operating system compared to others like me, you know. We skipped I Vista. I always called Vista a malware. Yeah, I hate Vista. So we skipped Vista for seven. That we one was skipped, good. We skipped that one was eight. Good. Only ran the server equivalent of Windows 8 because I needed to stand up a terminal server. And that technically ran server 2012, which was, it had looked like Windows 8. So we went from Windows 7 straight to 10. And honestly, I hope to skip 11. So well, first I was against we'll 10, see. but it's been working okay on my machine so far. For some reason on my son's computer, it keeps trying to reactivate. I don't understand that. It's like if you have it offline more than a week at a time, it decides that it's not a valid operating system anymore. And you got to go back in and reactivate it and do all the updates again. So it's a real big pain in the butt. But other than stuff like that, it's, it's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm used to it now. So it's like what choice do I have? So. <laughs> Can't run any hardware or anything less than 10 anymore. Believe it or not, I started no. out with Windows 3.1. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if he's still in chat or he left, but yeah. I mean, like, so even within Windows 7, before we moved to 10 fully, when it was still being patched, I bought a bunch of laptops with NVMe drives in them because they were faster and laptop hard drives are slow so you put a nice fast drive in there it feels like it's moving faster so um it wouldn't it wouldn't install windows 7 because windows 7 didn't know what an NV, nvme drive was right, it, it didn't know how to, the hardware it didn't know how to talk to it so I had to basically bootstrap it, an NVMe driver into my boot image mm -hmm. so I could boot the Windows PE, which is a, a thin down 
Windows image in order to basically do deployments. All right. Mm -hmm. So I had to add the NV in VME driver to my Windows PE image so I could boot to my deployment server. And then I had to add that driver to the Windows 7 image that I was deploying so it could take the image and then it could reboot and read off the hard drive and finish installing. And that was kind of the, the tail of the tape, like Windows 7 is on its way out because it doesn't recognize natively the latest hardware. You know, so. Well, that's what kicked me off of Windows 7 on my gaming rig here because it, Windows 7 wouldn't recognize the processor properly the AMD that I've got in here now. It would see it and everything, it would run, but it wouldn't allow the USB to function at all. And it was due to a, an issue between Windows 7 and the, and the CPU, because I looked it up and looked all the texts of things about it. So I was forced to go ahead and run Windows 10. Of course, Windows 10 immediately sees it, and it worked perfectly naturally, you know. So. Yeah. I've been, yeah. been running it ever since. Well, it's that way with these new uh, Alder Lake chips. I'm pretty sure if you try to install Windows 10 on an Alder Lake system, it probably, if it does anything, you'll probably only see the performance cores and you won't see the efficient cores. And that's the whole deal with Alder Lake is it's, it's got what are called big little cores and the performance cores are for performance jobs and the efficient cores are for the background tasks Right. to let the big cores do what they need to do. And the Windows 11 has the scheduler in it that knows what to do, but I'm sure Windows 10 doesn't, and I'm pretty sure that they're probably not going to patch it in. Why would they? Uh -huh. They want to push. They want to push you to 11. Right, they want you on 11, same way they want you on 10. I mean, they were pushing 10 so bad in the beginning. I had customers of mine before I shut my business down that they would come home from work because they had left their Windows seven updates on or whatever windows eight updates on and they came home and found they had windows 10 running on their machine <laughs> without permission and yeah. so now and this one lady was so mad because she had a digital camera a scanner and a printer that she paid close to three or four thousand bucks for all that stuff and none of it would work anymore on 10 at all none of it because there was no drivers available for 10. so i had to roll her machine back to seven for her and she was she was pretty upset <laughs> yeah well, yeah, there's a, at, at that point, there was a registry key you could put in to basically block the update. Yeah, but Microsoft doing something like that, that's a bit unethical because some people don't want to upgrade because of hardware issues, and they shouldn't be forced to do that. Right. But anyway, that's neither here nor there now. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I think in later years they wisened up a little bit, and they have like some upgrade checker now, and it's. Hey, is that Michael doing that? If you've got hardware that's not on a performance list, then then your your system's not offered it because right your system's not compatible yet. Well, I'm gonna step outside for a moment because somebody just shot off a firecracker right over my house. I might have to go and knock some heads. <laughs> All right. The Kalish Farms, it's... It's, uh... So, depending on where you are, right? Depending on your time zone, Farm Sim could release the evening or afternoon of November 21st. So, the countdown timer here is 22 days, 22 hours. So, it's just under 23 days. And it really depends on where you are. Now, if you're in Australia, according to your calendar, it's going to take longer for 22 to release because it's not going to release at midnight. Well, it will release at midnight on the 22nd CET. But for you, it might be the afternoon of the 23rd. So that countdown should be counting down to November 21st, uh, 6 p.m. My time. 
and I am six hours behind Giants time. So 6 p.m. my time on the 21st should be midnight to 22nd. So it's all relative to where you are. Well, on the West Coast, then you're going to get it on at 3 p.m. on the 21st. You're going to have the entire afternoon and evening. Ravenhawk, that? I don't know. I mean, Steam usually releases their games at what? 10 or 11 a.m.? So it might release at 10 or 11 a.m. on the 22nd. That's Eastern Time. Jacer, if you're still here, I I expressed the concern about the stubble destruction to Giant, so we'll see. I don't expect anything changing between now and uh, release, but I let them know of some concerns that I've heard, not just from you either, from others around being surprised that there isn't in essence, crop destruction on the tall stubble behind the sorghum. Now, well, at any rate, I expressed, I expressed the concern or the thought or the hope. So the same as what I was talking about yesterday, realizing that there are people out there that didn't know they had a podcast or didn't know that there was a North American community manager, I thought, well, let me express that. And what I think is going to happen is next week, Giants is going to release a blog update about their community managers, basically like, you know, welcome to the welcome to your community managers type blog post and reintroduce you to all three of them oh, okay Well, I mean, that's why I've got the little Ambassadors Network badge. If I didn't provide feedback back to Giants and be an intermediary, then I don't deserve to have that badge, right? Farm Sim Jim, welcome to the stream. We're just having some fun here on Eastern Shore, USA. Do a little harvesting, and then we'll fast okay, forward. Okay, I'm back. Clock a little bit better. All 
How are those sunflowers yielding? Oh, I don't know. You're just cutting them up. I don't really pay attention to how quickly it should be getting filled. No clue who it was that shot the firecracker. We're right over my house, one of those big ones, you know, that pops and explodes and has all the colors. Whoever shot it, they ducked into the house when I came out and started shining my spotlight around. <laughs> I got one of those big spotlights, it'll light a coon's face up at a quarter mile away. The LED spotlight. Mm, I don't know. If you're in the fit, I could use an unload. These I, these I planted with easy dev controls. So. so they're probably about a normal yield then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't scan the field. We didn't lime it or fertilize it. Probably than, doing pretty well for that. Other than saying it, I put a 100% fertilization state when I planted in with Dev Console, but that's it. Aaron, what trailer is that you got there? I don't recognize that one. Well, that's my favorite. It's the big it's agri liner. Agri okay. It's got a push wall in it. Sweet. I like that. Worked well in a lot of your dump points because you can't tip. The right, you can't tip. Yeah, I got the hard dump points. You got to work for it. I guess I get in there and usually just grab the Joskin or something like that, and I don't. I don't like that yellow Joskin. Okay, I recognize that trailer now. I used to use that one quite a bit in my Emerald Coast gameplay. I didn't recognize it from the back like that. We're about done, then we'll get on with it. Summer tips seem kind of cool. But yeah, I've been wondering about that. Uh, I was going to ask you about the the high temps in the summer. What season's length are you running? Three. Three, okay. I noticed when I was running three in my testing, Autumn. it seemed like a lot of the features you might see in the weather Autumn. are kind of abbreviated severely. Autumn, winter, 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 chicken dinner, summer, or spring. Yeah, like we, might, have we might not see snow. Probably not. I think it would play really well. I'm like, my gameplay here, I'm playing it on 24. So, and I, I just fast forward everything and to start my game at, at early autumn, so it would be kind of equivalent to what's really going on outside. And then um, we'll see how it does as far as actual weather events. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. We've got three weeks left and the game is gone anyway, so. Yeah, but I'm, there will be people play. There will be people still on 19 for a while. I might still, depending on what 22 is like. I'm kind of thinking looking. about maybe doing both. I'll play my play on this map for a while just so I can enjoy it, and then I'll start my new save on 22 and start trying to make money and save up. might get in some multiplayer action if I can find a farm that I like on the map there that somebody else hasn't grabbed already. Don't wow, we'll let you have whatever you want and we'll just make our own. Oh, yeah, I actually thought too maybe about getting in there and not even having a farm, just to have a piece of land where I can put a house on it, you know? Nope, then, nope, nope. You said you wanted a farm, a pre made well, uh, farm. Yeah, I don't, but 
but I was kind of thinking too on the side like maybe I would do um, what I've seen some folks do and maybe do like a services business of some sort you know provide services for all you guys that are farming you know like I don't know something that I can produce that you need or you could set up uh, shop at the at the single wide right could sure you could. could you could run the bakery could do that maybe run some contracts at the same time uh, or like somebody did on one of their gameplays maybe run the BGA or I don't know just something like that you know and where I'm not really having to have a farm in particular but I get to go around to all the farms and check them out because I'm you know providing something that people need so that's another thought that I kind of had about it just to make it interesting you know if you could get different farmers to get into the various production aspects mm -hmm. by raising the, the base products for it, then you could do like the logistics and stuff for that. Yeah, I could come pick up their product, pay them for it, and then actually produce it myself or something. Because since I'm not going to have a farm, I'm not going to be out there, you know, growing my own grain and whatever, but I'm going to need a source of it. So I could go and buy wheat from whoever and at a good price and then I'll have a couple of bins maybe at my little location where I can store it temporarily until I can get it all produced and then I'll take it and sell it after it's been produced or something like that. I'll have to, I want to see what the game's got going on in it first and kind of play around and say, oh, I like this or I don't like that, you know, and then make a decision. I'm kind of thinking away from in the multiplayer action anyway, not really wanting to have a specific farm it would be more of a scenery aspect just because hey that looks cool you know and i don't want to waste one for somebody else because i can put a cool barn on mine if i really just want to look at a barn well looking up here on top of the observation tower the Built sides look nice. Yeah, this is a very scenic area. raining well does it particularly look like the alpha alpha is growing back right Might take it a minute. Yeah, we still need to wait a little bit.
It says growing on my screen. It just hasn't come back yet. Let's see what these beets are done. Potatoes should be done. Look at the orange hedges. I see that. Yep, potatoes are done. Beets are done. Oh, cotton. One eyed Cotton Joe. is ready all right what's being checked on we're supposed to get a double crop check out all the seasons textures make sure there's a PDA in it and call this thing done yeah There's important things happening in my life. I, I gotta hurry up and play a NASCAR game. They might have fixed it. It might be perfect right this second. Yeah, you keep holding your breath. Uh, I can't stop choking after that. <laughs> now we can. I, I, I'm speechless. I, I don't understand how something like that could have got. That's how, a big tree. I mean, it was played in in Daytona. I know they had their little hands over it, but you know, they somehow had to know that thing was a piece of crap. I know. It's like, what bill did you give people at Daytona? Well, it wasn't it wasn't too bad when I was at Daytona earlier today. Are you kidding me? I, that game is horrible. But it was only, I was just, it was only four it was laps, so. Well, yeah, I just did the 20 lap special and it, I had, it had green. It said pits open. I had a black flag. There was a yellow flag. We never could pit, you know, the, the yellow flag didn't even work. You I got went, a caution? That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it was just dumb luck. I mean, I took half the field to be jumping out of the freaking track out you know out onto the road for it to but come yeah, out anyway i, I wouldn't I, um, for anything so i went down pit road and uh and you know i'm sitting here thinking oh well you know the ai is going to take over it because that's what they do oh my god so i'm like this seems a little fast so i just put on my brake and and it must have disengaged the ai and now I go flying out through pit road spinning. So I must have screwed them up. Well, one thing on a, a guy I saw that was playing it found is that he was he was locking his brakes up. He was barely touching his brakes on wheel and pedals. He was locking his brakes up. So he turned on ABS. And then he's like, the car is drivable now. Because ABS allowed him to actually put the brake pressure on that he was felt like he should be putting on. But if you put went way on the brakes, it would still lock him up. But when you locked him up without ABS off, you didn't get any smoke or anything. They just locked in your like your car like veered to a side. Right. But, but when you turned ABS on, if you actually locked your brakes up, you did get smoke. So it's like, it's clearly a, a bug there, but... Oh, I think it's past bugs. I don't think anything works. Like, I was all happy. I thought, well, it's going to save my settings. Well, half the time it'll save them. The other half the time it won't. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's like playing Russian roulette. Like, I got all excited. I hooked my steering wheel up. I'm like, Talladega was fun. How bad could Daytona be? Oh, yeah, well, it could be bad. <laughs> All right.
right, so. Like, how do textures work? Could you back everything up a season? Or advance everything a season? But, I don't know. Like, we're in late autumn, so we got some trees that are still colored. The poplars Ugh, are basically that's all, all the way done. again. Oh. Late autumn, the uh, weeds will be dead, too, I think. There's the flower weeds. So we got uh, poplars the poplars. Alpha turn purple. Poplars are done. Some of the trees are still orange and yellow. Oh, that's autumn. That's normal. I'm. You got to be Superman to get over a hedge to go check on our crops, see if they're ready to harvest. Hedges are dead. They were orange earlier. Yeah, that's good. They're doing what they're supposed to do then. Yep. Everything looks like it's changing like it should. So wheat is growing. Uh, we'll be right back. I've got flowered weeds in the field. Yeah, they're impervious. They don't die. <laughs> Seasons will kill them once the temperature gets down cold enough. Let's go see if we've got any growth on our alfalfa we cut. What the heck's going on with the alfalfa? No. Yeah, we, we cut it late summer. Well, you know, it's like regular grass. Sometimes you cut grass and it doesn't grow at all in autumn. Grass is oh, kind of browning out. That's all right. I forgot Will thinks these things should be like the rainforest. It's taller than the farmer. I was kind of looking, I'm like, why the hell is poplar growing out here? How's that big shed there stopping the rain? Yeah. That's good. Are you going to have to tweak the seasons file for this health album? Or for what reason? Well, didn't you do that for midtail or something? I don't know. Just look at the grass. If it kind of looks like grass, then it's fine. Well, one thing I wanted to do next game year is mow the gr grass and the alfalfa as soon as possible and then see how many see how well it regrows for subsequent cuts oh uh, yeah mm -hmm. see if you can get two or three cuts in a year out of I it i mean the alfalfa we cut late summer and it didn't grow back so probably because it was too late yeah All right, we're in early winter. Trees are all done for. Edges are done.
Okay, there looks good. Well, I mean, according to the growth schedule, it's still in the harvest. I mean, it's still like it's you're supposed to be able to harvest it beyond winter or early winter. Yeah, it looks like grass is just one stage up in the ready-to-harvest cycle. So that means that alfalfa really shouldn't be brown. Uh-oh. Somehow I got the chainsaw out. In the middle of the night. Fitting for Halloween. So, some of this grass is. Here's your short grass, it's like a neon color. Looks like midwinter, the grass got knocked back. So did the alfalfa, it's now knocked back. need any more water there we go let's see what this canola is doing oh interesting canola's withered I wonder if it came to. I don't know. It was growing, and now midwinter it's withered. Anola has withered? Yeah. Well, my field 13 is still the same. Hasn't grown, hasn't done squat, but I guess that's to be expected. How, uh, what time of the year did we plant canola? I planted it early, too early, but it came up, it was fine. Hmm, okay. I saw it. I saw it in a yellow flower state. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't check it yesterday. And then today it's withered. Let's see, canola you can't harvest past mid-autumn. And you can't plant it past late autumn. So in theory, if you planted it between late summer and late autumn, it should last through winter and into next summer. But it didn't. It like withered.
Oh, we had some baby Holsteins. We haven't fed those guys, but yeah, they should be. They should be popping up all dying this time around. I know water in them. I don't know if we're going to get frozen ground to see the lakes. Is there a console command to make frozen ground happen? Oh, I don't know. I was able to make snow easily enough, but I don't know about the, the, the frozen ground. I'm not sure. You'd have to manipulate the temperature, I guess, somehow. Yeah, I don't think our temps are going to be cold enough. I don't know. I have to Google Celsius to figure that one out. What, you're someone with Celsius? Yeah, what? I have something I got to change myself? Yeah. Yep, because mine are on Fahrenheit. I mean, it's it's pseudo fine. We'll have mild winters. Where we really want to keep that. Every three or four years, freeze. we need a bobcat to clean the driveway. And just like we expected, our hedges are greening up as is our trees in late winter because it just seems like it does that. Yeah, seasons is kind of wonk on the dates. But, well, I mean, if you've got a warm winter, you're going to have stuff start to come out in February. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it does that down here quite a bit. And you get that little freeze about mid-March, and it <laughs> stunts them a little. You having fun up there? All kinds. Dancing in the sky. <laughs> there, um, well, that's genetic. How you doing that? Just I'm dead. probably doing the same thing. Yeah, he is. My client looks identical to that. It's like you hung the guy on a on a fish hook and he's just he's dangling there like bait. Have you ever seen a guy swimming in water? No, I haven't. Genetic, let's go find some water. Water. Yeah, go to the lake. There's about three lakes here. Big lake and two smaller ones. Oh, I fall through. Fall through the water? Yeah, I fell through that one. You shouldn't. It's regular you water buttons. Did you shut off your flight? Yeah, turn off your flight because it'll that may mess up. Alright, hold on. Let me get back just here walk, and watch him swim. Walk into it. Oh no, you're still in it. You're still flying though. I'm shut off the flight mode. Okay. Looks like he's running in the water. That's funny. Diablo del Toro. Well, thank you very much. 999 super chat sticker. Oh, cool. <laughs> there was a huge splash. There you go, now you're swimming. There you go. Shut it off. Shut it off in the dev controls.
There, you see him swimming. That looks really awkward. Yeah, he's doing it. It would be very awkward in jeans and a shirt. That's for sure. <laughs> Hey, you can do like a backstroke thing. You're kicking everything. That's too bad when you're in flight mode, you can't go horns. I don't like that because you could be like a Superman fly around. All right, guys, stop showing off. Fast forward. I brought this ideal here, 45 foot head, to do a half acre field. I thought, damn, I'm doing it. Roll them time. He's cranky. Give you one guess. How's that? Darren's in a mood. <laughs> he has NASCAR fever. Ah, okay. Yeah, I gotta so, take revenge maps. I would, right now, I would like slap a PDA in this thing and give it to your fans, man. It's fine. It works. Just don't. Say I can show you something. It doesn't work. Just don't get in a multiplayer lobby. Well, I, I think there's only one thing that isn't really working at this point, and that's the cuttable trees, the, uh, what you call it, the volume trees, but I'm working on those now. I'm well, that's not them. a problem. Just tell people about the trees. Like, well, that's something you can touch. Yeah, that's that's something you can test. Yeah. That's something you can test. Oh yeah, I'll cut one as soon as I get done with it and see if it falls over. Ooh, I know wee. neon neon grass. GTX's uh, trees are cuttable. I cut one yesterday. Dude, that grass be uh, weird looking. See, the only grass that shouldn't, or the only uh, tree that should not be cuttable will be that old dead oak tree. And that's why you can remove those. You can sell them and get, get, get them gone. Looks like this needs two more growth stages. I'm doing two or three or four things tonight at the same time. So I'll pop out just for another second or two, and I'll be right back. So we should see wool start to grow once we have grass to feed these guys. We haven't lost any cows. Not from the farm here, anyway. Well, they better start. They better start dying quick. As soon they'll get like natural grass. There already is. It's like thirty thousand liters. Alrighty. Almost done with this thing. Put her to bed and call her finished. Oh, it's still. <laughs> It was still filling from before. So the alfalfa won't be harvestable until summer, apparently. 
Put it at the Geo. We did get a growth state, though. So you want me to run the big M down there and try to run across this grass field, or...? It says it's ready to harvest. Oh, the alfalfa does? No, the grass. Yeah, let's cut a little bit of grass and make, make sure to uh, see how many growths we can estimate if we cut it right away. You know, when you don't normally play using this piece of machinery, yeah, it's a two thirds it's growth. Nice. You kind of realize you're missing out if you're not using it sometimes. So two thirds growth mid spring for grass. That's pretty good. Where's the field entrance here? Up here a little bit. All right, let's go yes, over yes, here. Yes. See if our canola is still withered. I'm sure it is. Come on. Yeah, the withered. But our other crops over here looking good. Barley. Barley could conceivably ready be ready next. That would be interesting. could harvest barley and then put oats in and then harvest it you could have two cereals the same year Assume you got enough grass cut. Yeah. It switched from wet grass to semi dry grass. Oh, it dried already? No, just it was damp, wet crop when I was cutting it. All right, later, Thor. <laughs> yeah, it's drying itself out now on this semi-dry. It's changing into dried on its own. That's good. Any second now. Ready to harvest. Go, 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 go. What's your delay? You know, the man's way. Some wheat's still growing.
Oats are still growing. So that's funny. Barley was the only thing that changed right away. We planted all this at the same time. Right, but the geo shows barley's earliest harvest is late spring. Wheat and oats are earliest harvest in early summer. So if you plant barley in the fall, you could conceivably harvest it in late spring and still plant oats because you can plant oats all the way through spring. And then you can harvest oats in the fall and then put barley back in it. So you can get right. double grain out of a single field or after you harvest your barley, you could plant soybeans or corn or sunflowers or cotton, potatoes or sugar beets. Like summer, we can do wheat and oats and then we could put soybeans or corn in that field. But barley, you can actually rotate. You could put barley in, harvest it, oats in, harvest it, put barley in for next year. And you get two cereals off of one field. That's interesting. Uh, our alfalfa grew. I'm going to mow some of it. I got the grass already. Grass didn't come back. Uh, the grass did on this first cutting. This is the second. This is after today's growth. What's in front of me is yesterday's cut. You know, the alfalfa says two thirds growth. Alfalfa. So you should be able to cut in late spring. I've never actually cut the alfalfa in any of my saves yet. I never had time. Oh, okay. So I did. Okay. So the grass has come back. Right. Yeah, we got a growth cycle on that one I cut yesterday. So. So late spring, we have 100% growth grass. Mid spring, we have two thirds growth. But we also have now one third growth on the grass we cut yesterday, so we might be able to get another cut early summer. Huh. Very nice. Where did genetic go? Alfalfa won't cut it. Yep, the alfalfa won't cut it. Two years growth. Oh, it still says growing, huh? Funny that your, uh, your stream labs, your uh, great adventure there, talks about not having JD techs because we're having that problem in our area. There's nobody working at the places to fix anything. Oh, so look at that. John Deere's gonna, guys, John Deere's gonna polish it themselves out of business. And of course, our 12 um, year old tractor has already lost hydraulic pump. Right? So. There aren't enough trained technicians working to keep up with the pool that need fixed. And there's plenty of shade tree mechanics that could do the job, but you know, they are locked out. Do 
Shady Tree Mechanic and is my favorite kind. Hey, that's what I do. Yep. I was a Shade Tree Fabricator today, so... Oh, there you go. There needs a trailer. I'm coming. Look at that, FK shows us you don't need problems with the AK, just drive right through it. I like that old new hall in there, I hope we get that one back again. I don't think it's listed anymore, or yet, but it might show up as a Giants mod post-release. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because remember the case that we had in 17, it showed up as, as an early release, I think, in 19, and then um, I'm hoping this will show up as an early release. Well, thank you. I picked it out myself. Color is Darren's combine. The black fent combine with the red case header. That works. Yep. Would have been even cooler to put a John Deere header on it. Mm -hmm. He, didn't he want wanted it to work. <laughs> yeah, wanted it to work. Who let Crazy Uncle Joe on the combat? Oh, we're, wait, making, the we're making crop S's. It's a dirt bike course. A barley maze, perhaps? That's modern art. Did you learn that in your underwater basket weaving class? No, I learned it in my hot air balloon wood uh, wood burning course. Where we go up in a hot air balloon full of helium and and use a hot um, soldering iron to burn wood. We also make uh, macaroni art. Nice. The edible glue is the best part. That's how kids stay together. They eat glue. Then when they fall down, they don't break. Well, you know, you need to have some kind of food that'll stick to your ribs, right? Yeah, maybe that's my problem. I ate too much rib sticking food. So everything's stuck to my ribs. 
I went to a doctor like two years ago that said America's biggest problem is it just has too much food. Well, the latest research I've been reading is not overeating is not the problem with people gaining weight. It's uh, chemicals in the food that causes even lab animals to get fat, even when they're given no food at all. And well, the, that in portions. Well, even portions, because I eat less now than I ate when I was 25, and I could eat twice as much when I was 25 and never gain a pound. So what changed, you know, except that I got older. Well, your body, <clears throat> you just, yeah. I mean, to see yeah. that they're saying with these chemicals and stuff, see the trend has gotten much worse over the last 15 years. And they even have laboratory rats, which are, their diet is perfectly controlled because they're in medical experimentation, you see. And these animals, when they're fed their food out of plastic containers and stuff like that, they get fat too, just like us. And they identified the chemical and it's uh, even present in the umbilical cord of the mother which shows it permeates our entire society. And it's, uh, I think the main source of this chemical is plastics and aluminum cans, which of course our soft drinks come in aluminum cans and everything else we eat comes in plastics. There you go. Kind of sucks when I read that because I'm like, well, that's hopeless then, no way to fix that problem. Ah, oh, you just have to go off the grid and grow your, grow your own food. But don't store it in plastic. And I guess you can't wrap it up in aluminum. Well, it's like the artificial sweetener that's in most diet drinks has been demonstrated to, uh, I guess, trigger an eating response. Well, it messes with your insulin levels in your body is what it does, and then that jacks it up. <clears throat> but I'm hopelessly addicted to diet soda, so I can't help it. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I go home and like, see my mom and she'll be like I should go like through six cans of Diet Coke in like a day mm -hmm. and that's if she's being light me too you know? like she'll come down and visit and like I deliberately limit myself to one or two if I'm at work two because I'll have one one is my caffeine in the morning because I don't drink coffee Right. And then one is, you know, usually I'll have a soda at lunch. And then that's it. Um, if at the house, I'll have one in the morning and that's it. So we have our kid, basically, he can have one a day. He gets to pick when he has it. Usually he picks dinner time. Um, but she'll come down and, like, the 12-pack that's in the fridge will be, like, be gone in a day and a half. It's like, what the heck? Oh, Where'd yeah. it go? Where did it all well, go? I usually, I usually have two for breakfast, two for lunch, and two for dinner. <laughs> At least. So, so, yeah. Yeah, but I was having a hard time getting off the um, regular sodas until uh, I drank a Dr. Pepper Zero. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, when I drank that that day, it turned me off of completely and I haven't had anything in a month. I don't drink regular soda anymore because once I started drinking the diet soda, the regular stuff was just way too sweet. But the diet is just as bad because it's got the artificial sweeteners in it. So, there you go. That's uh, one of those uh, catch-22 things, I think. Yeah. So... And then refined white sugar is another problem because refined white sugar has been proven to upset the body's insulin balances as well. And so it causes problems with your uh, food retention and fat retention. So you've got three things going against you right there that are everywhere in our society. So what do we do? Well, yeah. Coffee is <laughs> an addictive substance that feeds itself. That's true. Because it's you get the you get the high of the caffeine, but then the caffeine also gives you this low mm -hmm. that's only satisfied by more caffeine. So more caffeine, just, right? And then you wake up in the morning and you're coming off of your low, 
from mm-hmm. the previous day's caffeine so you need more caffeine and then you feel that euphoric eye and you're like oh i'm ready for the for the day and i think caffeine i think i read something like it had a half-life of 12 hours or something so about the time you know the worst thing you can do is have caffeine in the evening not because it's going to keep you up at night but it's because about the time you would come on a caffeine crash is exactly when you would be waking up exactly so you're only feeding your caffeine addiction by having that morning coffee and feeling that it's the only thing that gets you going in the morning But Oprah said morning caffeine was good for you. I don't care. Coffee Oprah just looks. Coffee just looks better in public than beer at six in the morning. She also gave everybody cars, and they were excited until they realized they owed tax. Uh, let's see which house. This one's easy to sleep Gonna in. Sell the car to pay the tax. Well, at work they would, they used to. They used to have like travel trips, and one of their travel trips was to LA, and it was like a, a com studies class. And when they go to LA, one of their things they would go to Price It's Right, or like Wheel of Fortune game shows and be in the audience and after that they would have like a talk with the producers and like the hosts and all the other things and they basically would say yeah we've we've given the same car away 17 times on this game show because the winner can't leave the taping until they've paid their for their winnings and there's so many people that win they don't have the money to pay for their winnings after the taping that they really go home empty handed because they didn't win that car because they couldn't pay for the tax sales tax. So they've given away the same, you know, four Taurus for three months straight. All right, so our other cereals should be ready. Maybe our alfalfa will be ready to cut, and maybe our grass will be ready to cut. I'm going to check the alfalfa and the grass, and then I'll be there with the grain cart. Get out of the hedge. Mm. Yeah, I might have to wait for the growth to pop on this. Yeah, it hadn't popped yet. Boom. Let there be growth. Uh, and the alfalfa look like... is cutting. Is it? Some early summer. What we cut it last time? Late summer and couldn't get it? Or was it autumn? Yeah, it was early, late summer. That's when we started. Since you see dead dead things in late autumn, you may see dead alfalfa in late autumn, so that might be why it won't cut when it turns brown. Well, it'll still cut until it um, takes the, knocks back the growth cycle, right? even if it turns purple or brown or whatever that's supposed to be. The grass is at two thirds growth, so we did mid summer or mid spring, and now we could do an early summer cut. I'm headed that way. So the Geo will definitely allow double cropping your second year, not your first year. The 
Oops. Wrong gate. Formals forever. What is up? Navigating those gates. Look at that. Just right in there. Yeah, it's almost like I've been on the map for a while. You might you might get that impression, yeah. Almost like you've seen it in a past life or something. Or maybe an earlier version of it. Alright there, look at that beauty. That's nice. So that's harvested sorghum. So this is the tall stubble. You can see Sorghum back here. Big Demco offloading. And they're running a combine through it? Yeah, you cut Sorghum with a combine. You can also cut it with a forage harvester. So there's there's the header height. You can see it's basically up. Cutting just uh, the top. I guess if you're going for seed Sorghum, maybe, for the combine. But... So for grain, you know, for grain purposes. And then if you're going to use it for forage for your cattle, then you cut the whole stalk down. But I don't know if the game's going to let you forage it. I don't know. We'll have to find out once we get the game. Right, so and even, if it, even yeah. if it don't, I'm sure we'll get a, um, a, a mod that will do it. Ooh, that's a nice uh, one for me. Limpkin Cultivator. Looks like a Massey Ferguson. <laughs> this, is, this is on the French map. Hence the guy in his beret and fancy driving gloves. Oh, I know, right? And the Volter Valmet that all the Europeans are excited about. The French wear gloves because they are Celsius bon. And there's your spader. I guess the spader is basically a tool that gets the crop all blended into the ground. Well, let me pull up a video. I've never heard of a spader before. That's interesting. I don't think it, I don't think they do them in in North American dirt. Yeah, our dirt's tough over here. Well, it's American made. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, a pretty dudes. So it's got these big tires on the back, but that's because after it's done spading, like it's super, super light aerated soil. Like I said earlier, think of it like as a giant garden tiller. So there's the spades. It just chews up the ground. And it probably digs down a couple feet. We need that front weight. Just a basket to put all those rocks we pick about the field in. Yeah, yeah. And then it has giant tires in the back to compress it. But look at that. I mean, it's just a giant garden tiller. That's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a power hero on steroids. Yeah, yeah. You, know that? you can see the, the tines roll. It looks like a garden tiller. Exactly like a garden tiller. Yeah. yeah. So a power hero just scratches the surface and spins yeah. That comes down yeah. in. This one gets on down in there. Yeah, you can see how Ooh, deep it cuts by thing. by how high it is and where the dirt was on the in implement. So it cuts that gets down, down a couple of feet. Yeah. Darren is Somehow proving, I don't think that would work too good in our dirt. Darren is proving that you no. can use big machinery on this map. No, I think... I think it would tear itself up when it hit all those rocks. You wouldn't have any. You wouldn't have any more uh, spades. Or the machine would be oh, bucking so and jumping. Would that be for like root crops and stuff. I don't know. I think it would be uh, better in Europe than having to plow the land every other year or so. You know, because this thing will not only does it turn it over, but it chops everything up really good too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said when I saw it. I'm like, it's just a giant garden tiller. 
But you see how soft it is because uh, mm -hmm. the big tires on the end end up leaving all these deep ruts. Right. If you ran one of these every fall, you'd probably never need to plow. If you had hard dirt over here, that would rip that thing to pieces, I think. Uh, now, the dirt down here around the Emerald Coast area, since it's so sandy, would probably do fine with it. But when you get a little bit further north or a little bit further west or even east from where we are here, the dirt's harder and thicker, has a lot of clay in it. I don't so, think the thing's going to run too good in the so clay. So that spader was two and a half meters. We also get a three meter version and a four and a half meter version. So what was that one behind that, that Deutz? Was it like a three meter? What's that? This one, two and a half. Where's New Holland? Uh, the little harvester is not listed yet. CH 770, that might be the replacement for it. No, that's still too big. I know, I know, Golden Eye, that's what I said. Around here, you don't you don't jam a, a shovel on the ground and and move the handle unless you expect it to snap off. But I know that I know the Europeans when they saw we were getting a spader, they were all going crazy, like, oh yeah, finally a spader. They're happy campers. It's like, uh, okay. That might have something to do with their um, conservation laws being so much tighter over there, too. Supposedly. to farm sim there's an international harvester seed drill on the mod hub comes in two sizes all right i think i think what we'll do is we'll just fast forward through summer and autumn see how many cuts we can get see if we can get two cuts of alfalfa and then call it sounds like a plan You cut the you cut some grass again? Yes, I did. All right. <clears throat> There's a small swath of alfalfa, but you should be able to easily tell that where it's at. Oh yeah, because the alfalfa was huge. Well, I tell you, Farm Sim Jim, I was trying to download base games or our seasons off the Mod Hub the other day for this. And it took way too long because you can't just type seasons in. You get 40 pages of hits. And seasons might be in there somewhere.
I found the one I think he's looking for. It's called IHC Drill Version 1.0. If you type that in Google, it'll pop up all over the internet. Oh, really? It's on lots of different sites. IHC C drill? Yes, version 1.0. If you want to do it even better, you can put FS-19 on the end of it, but it looks just about the same size as the eye of the John Deere one he's looking, looking at. And I've got a picture of it right here. I see it on the internet. Yeah, eventually I had to type in Realismus, and then I eventually got it. Let's go find our alfalfa. That's not popped yet. That growth cycle popped in quicker. So the grass is grown. Third. Oh, shoot. Come on. There we go. All right, so we have alpha alpha regrowth. So let's go and see if we can get three cuts. I mean, if you can get a cut mid spring, early summer, and late summer, that would be awesome. Cut a swath of grass and alfalfa this time too. So it should be like midnight. It's raining. We'll see. I guess we'll see if the uh, alfalfa rots. And you may notice in this house that there is no bedroom or bathroom. I noticed that. It's terrible. You look upstairs. Look up over your head. You'll see the pop-down attic steps that go to the upstairs. Is that where the bathroom is? Yep. Because when the house is modeled from the outside, it has a complete upstairs with at least one bedroom and another room up there, so. And under the rug there, if you open, pull the rug back, then there's a pop downstairs that go down to the basement. I don't want to know what happens in the basement. I don't either. That's why I don't go down there. Well, you can't move the rug. No, that's in your imagination. You can't really do it. That's an awful low ceiling for a second floor. Yeah, go around the side of the house. Look at all that room up there. You just can't. You don't have any side-to-side -side room to speak of, that's all. all right, so. so the original grass cut is fully grown again. Oh, alfalfa's regrowed. So we cut the early summer. The original summer. and the second cut of grass are both 
our bow with reground 100%. So you can get two cuts of alfalfa. Yeah, that's cool. I was hoping you would be able to. So you gotta cut it right away in early summer, and then you can get a cut in late summer, and then you're done. How about and two cuts of grass also? Three. Yeah, but you can on your first year. Second year, you should be able to get two. Well, if you have a field that's already planted in alfalfa. Actually, wasn't this swath through here the one I did midsummer? Yeah, there's yeah, three alfalfa yeah. fields that are planted on the map when you start, so they're already ready to cut. Yeah, you've been able to get three grass cuts. That's good. Because the cut over here, where I'm at, is where you were yesterday. And it's at two thirds growth. So. Well, technically, this one's yesterday, and that one's the day before, but. Right, well, yeah. So well, you these cut. Two are both you cut mid spring. Already. You cut mid spring, you cut early summer, and now you've cut late summer. And now we'll see what happens in early spring. Well, now this early one autumn. I cut at the second growth stage, didn't I? This first swath down like, towards the east. Yeah, yeah. You've, so far, you've cut everything at second growth, as far as I know. Well, either way, you're going to get plenty of grass cutting. So. And there's lots of grass fields, too, so you should have plenty of grass. You know, if a person doesn't like all the crop fields around the cattle farm and being too tight to get into, I can always just put all them in alfalfa and grass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're bigger fields for crops. Yep. Oh no, it's crop circles. Almost. Who's Randy? Let's hope your seasons are long enough so you can make hay.
Oh. Just sent alfalfa growth. Yeah, the grass did too. So apparently you are going to get three growths of grass easily. So the, gra the alfalfa I cut yesterday didn't regrow the alfalfa you cut the day before it did. Yeah, it seems to have a, like a layover or something. <clears throat> So you cut that again. Or, or okay. This this is what you cut yesterday. This is what you just cut. Right. I cut it. Started cutting before the growth cycle popped in. So. All right. So we want to see if this pops tomorrow. At some point, it's going to stop popping. Oh, we're losing animals left and right. Uh oh, finally happened. It took two years, but we did it. Let me stop watering them. All right. So, uh, what do you think the likelihood of? Likelihood of an early November release is? I must step out again. Um, thank you. As soon as I get my PDA and I can get my trees cut, I will. Put it up on Simply Safe real quick. <laughs> Appreciate that, Will. I'm just watching you guys on the stream right now. I haven't done any of that. There's nothing for me to do, so. There's a oh, Raz. Good. He missed it. Raz, what's up? The hedges so, are so pretty in the autumn. Oh. They are, aren't they? So I think we're good. We know we can get multiple cuts of grass, multiple cuts of alfalfa if you cut it right. Um, yeah. You got you your fancy PDA. Yeah, the PDA was the last thing I was waiting on. So as far as once the trees get their cuttable collisions in place, then I think it's done. So I'll take, I'll take this version of the map. I'll slap the new PDA in there, and then I'll do my map video and have it ready. Okay. There's really nothing. Only other thing's going to change is just the collisions in the trees, and that's not going to show up on a video anyway. No, <laughs> I, I tend to have a policy of not cutting trees anymore. 
There you go. Good policy. So, um... Well, I'm going to upload it early in the morning on uh, the 1st of November, so it'll be ready for release by afternoon if Grizzly's on the ball like he usually is. And then I'll post a link for it in uh, the Discord. Looks like grass is done growing. Three cuts. Four if you're super on the ball and you cut it two-thirds every time. Yeah, two cuts of alpha alpha might still be iffy, but I think you can cut uh, it in the late autumn or something. I think if you if you cut it early summer, then you've got all the rest of the year to cut it. Run away! Yeah. Thanks for the, the sub. Cut in case it doesn't dry or whatever. But... And play uh, longer season lengths will help too. I think this geo seems to run smoother at longer lengths. That is gonna cost. And now you guys have heard. Unless something major happens, this map should be available early November. Take a look at the channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. Ding dong. That way you'll get a notification as soon as the map video goes live. The map video goes live as soon as I get word that the map is released and available for download. It'll be available over at simplysafemods.com. It is a 4X map available for PC only as a result of it being not only a 4X map, but also over at simplysafe.com. And then you guys will get about 20 some days of play on east coast before that thing we call fs22 releases on november 22nd and remember we're giving away a copy of farm sim 22 on november 22nd so you still have one more chance to win if the weather cooperates we'll be over on susquehanna river valley doing some live streams either over the weekend or next week because, well, we got a harvest. And then that will close out Susquehanna. Four years of gameplay on that multiplayer server. And until next time, happy farming.